T-O-A dot com. <laughs> no, Blaine Bishop here from 104.5 The Zone, former Titan, of course, here with Les Whitley, the director of sports performance uh, with TOA. And uh, today we're going to address some things that, man, I think is very vital for all levels of sports. But for me, when I got to the pros is really when I noticed it. And that was uh, injury prevention. You know, you don't think about those things until you get injured. That's kind of what I did. I got injured and I said, uh oh. Maybe I need to start incorporating this into my actual workouts, even in the off season. So let's kind of take us through this maturation process of what has happened over the years of, you know, having this part of your actual workout, or should it be during uh, your injury only, and then you just move on back to your normal self? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, years ago, we were very much in a reactive stage. Um, you know, going back 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, there weren't so there wasn't the emphasis on prevention of injuries and really paying attention to the demands placed on the body in various sports and athletic endeavors. Um, as we've evolved, learning more about how training can actually enhance performance and reduce the likelihood of injuries or the severity of injuries. Um, then fast forward to now, you have such access at the youth level for all kinds of skill development, mm -hmm. but we've kind of lost focus on how important it is to develop as an athlete, mm -hmm. uh, which means you need to be able to run, jump, stop, start, change direction uh, under good control, um, in addition to performing this specific skills of your sport. Um, with that comes, you know, it used to be cross training years ago, mm -hmm. you know, to do and expose your body to different things other than what you would experience during your sport. So for me, that's kind of a first line of defense when it comes to injury prevention. And now instead of being reactive and waiting for something to happen, now we're being a little more proactive. We, we're taking action instead of reaction by incorporating various training methods and modalities into your regularly occurring training season, preseason, during the season, after the season, your off seasons. Hmm. Well, take us through a little bit for an example. Let's say if I was having hamstring tightness issues throughout my career, whether it was in high school, college, or, or the pros, and, and uh, what could I be doing to help me manage through that and still perform at a high level? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the first step is always understanding what the issue is, and sometimes that requires an in-depth assessment. Um, we're involving either orthopedic staff, uh, utilizing imaging if need be, but otherwise taking through kind of a performance assessment where we're actually having the athlete move through space, experience different stresses, because just having an athlete stand and look and observe and see, you know, there's yet yeah, maybe leaning one way or another or something's not quite, you know, where it should be, but to have the athlete move and actually experience what they're feeling, that's when we can kind of dial in to figure out what movement patterns uh, are overstressing the body or what muscle groups aren't supporting those movement patterns. Uh, so that comes down to uh, a series of, let's go straight line running. Right, can they run in a straight line with good rhythmical pattern without any kind of wiggle or wobble or deviation? And then we'll have the athlete change direction. Can they start stop under control with acceleration and deceleration? And that's just basic movement patterns. Then we can take them through a series of other movements to assess both their strengths and weaknesses um, and their mobility around the joints. Are there limitations with how their body moves? And then we begin layering on to how do we address those specific things through training? Mm. Well, I can give you an example of myself. You know, I and actually been the way I was built with both legs and my IT bands and hips were always tight. So kind of Talk to us a little bit about how not only having the other muscles loose and having flexibility, and they call it pliability, right? Absolutely. Um, you know, what you can do to make sure you keep your, your hips loose as well as your IT bands on your own, kind of, you know, maybe when you're stretching before practice, but also on your own while you're sitting there just watching TV. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I'll speak to this, you know, as, as kind of called the aging athlete, if you will, um, that crossed over into another decade. And your body, you know, takes a little longer to kind of get things going. It's like starting up the car in the morning, you know, when it's cold outside, you gotta let the mm. engine warm up a little bit before you take off. Um, so imagine that functioning unit. We need time to allow our bodies to adapt to those movement patterns. If I know I'm gonna be sprinting 
sprinting or running today. I just don't want to take off and start sprinting. I want to make sure my body is warm and mobile. Uh, and then the, we'll take them through what we call a dynamic warm up, having them actively move through a series of skips and jumps and bounds and different movement patterns. And that's as much of kind of a, a time to begin to assess the athlete. If I feel tight, stiff in a particular area today, I'm going to spend a little more time getting that ready and prepped for the activity I'm about to do. So maybe my hamstrings are feeling a little bit tight today. So maybe I'm doing a leg swing back and forth and I'm feeling one side more than the other. Maybe that transitions into more of a static stretch where I'm addressing that specifically. But then on the flip side, it might not be muscle flexibility that's the issue. It might be activation. I'm not firing certain muscles in sequence. So I need to spend more time on the prep and activation actually giving the muscle a little bit of resistance that it has to push through in order to get it firing in right sequence because after all the body is a functional unit we don't think of it in body parts when i go out and perform you know an athletic endeavor i don't think of well i need to get my hand to do this my arm to do this or you know throw this way position yes that's part of it but our body is a functional unit that has to operate together you have you know the symphony orchestra you know one instrument out of tune will make the whole thing you know, sound terrible. Your body's no different. If you have one part that's out of whack, your body will compensate to make things happen. But eventually, just like if you're driving your car down the street and it's out of alignment, your tires are going to wear out prematurely. Your body's no different. If something's not in good alignment, something's not working well, something's going to pick up the slack from that and may get you know, excessive undue wear, which could lead to injury down the road. So that ties back to that injury prevention side of things is to be able to address, acknowledge, and then identify those specific things and then develop a game plan to be able to address those. Oh man, one thing that I was conflicted on less man throughout my entire career, and it was just because it was, I think of my body composite, like how I was built. Sure. I was kind of a, you know, short stocky guy. And uh, I would always have issues with strength to then having mobility. Mm -hmm. Because every time I got stronger, I got tighter. When, you know, halfway through my career, I'm realizing no, flexibility is the key. So how do you balance that battle of strength and flexibility? It's a great question. And you can go several different directions with this, but um, with, with strength, it's the ability to overcome resistance. Mm -hmm. So depending on your sport, what resistance you might encounter, that's where we begin to develop those programs to, to meet the needs of that or exceed the demands of that. Um, if I have you know, a 12 year old baseball player, right? So they're not gonna be taking on 300 pound offensive or defensive linemen. So I don't need to put them in that kind of stressful situation. I need to make sure they have good body awareness, body control, and then good relative strength. So I'll break strength into two different categories, maximal strength and relative strength. Maximal strength is how much can I lift at any one given event, any one given time. That's maximal strength. That's one time. Relative strength is that strength that applies to me controlling my body through space. Think body weight activities like push-ups, uh, pull-ups, squats, mm -hmm. lunges, where I'm controlling my body. A 300 pound offensive lineman's got more body to control than a 150 pound you know, defensive back. So in those situations, their relative strength is going to be different. Maximal strength is also going to be different. So when we talk about developing programs, we want to make sure that we're meeting the needs and demands of the sport or the event that the athlete's going to encounter, but then also improving that as we go along. So they're continuing to get stronger, continuing to be exposed to more resistance instead of getting into a situation where they're now overwhelmed by some opposing force that, again, leads them to risking injury. Mm. Well, we're on with uh, Les Whitley uh, with TOA, the Director of Sports Performance. And, you know, Les, uh, you know, probably my last question, I didn't realize this. What is the most underdeveloped in today's age at any level, uh, what muscles or tendons? Because I realized towards, uh, you know, year six, seven, you know, that my ankle tendons weren't as, as strong. And once I got them stronger, I felt like I ran faster. So what are the tendons or muscles you would say that are underdeveloped mostly now in today's age and people just aren't working on them? You know, some it could be just forearm working. Sure. If you're a baseball guy, you know, having a strong form. So kind of, you know, explain some of those things that, uh, you know, are undeveloped muscles. Yeah, absolutely. So um, one of the things, and I had an example of this yesterday with one of my, my youth athletes um, who's an actual kicker. Uh, mm -hmm. at a high school program. They're wrapping up their season and um, his coach to him said, hey, you need to be more athletic. 
So he's practicing his skill, he's really honing in on developing those things, but he said he needs to be more athletic. Well, I asked him, I said, well, what do you think that means? Uh -huh. He said, I'm not really sure. Right. He'd be more than an athlete. Well, what does that mean to you? So do you jump well? Do you run well? Can you start, stop, change direction? Can you control your body through space? All right. So that would be the fundamentals of the athletic continuum. Then can you do that in your sport? So he's a football player. Now we take that level of athleticism, move that into the sport of football where there are specific demands to that. And then you have a position, offense, defense, and your actual specific position. As a kicker, there are specific demands placed on him. So the training that we develop, I don't go into the specifics of the skill the athlete's gonna perform, mm -hmm. but what demands are placed on the body. So with that being said, when I do my evaluation, I'm looking at how his hips are moving, right to left. Can he transfer power from one foot to the other foot mm. with rotation? So now when I'm pulling those things together, I realize that for his specific sport, he has a high demand of rotation through the hips and his shoulders. He asked me the question, when I'm training, why do I need to be stronger with my upper body? Well, I said, think about it. Your upper body creates a counterbalance and rotation to allow your hips to pull through. So when I'm doing that, I want to make sure everything's in balance. So a long-winded answer to the question is we look for symmetry. So if I have an athlete that doesn't make good contact with the ground, their ankles are moving around, I want to take them out of the shoes that they're in and see how their feet are contacting the ground. So for me, that becomes a priority. So each athlete is gonna experience something completely different. So you, for example, had issues with the actual shape and structure of your bones and your legs. Mm -hmm. So there's specific demands that you're gonna experience through your feet, your hips, your knees, your ankles mm -hmm. that another athlete might not face. Mm -hmm. So that's where a skilled professional coach um, a strength and performance coach that's you know, certified and, and has the background and credentials plus the experience that can look at, observe from the time the athlete walks in the door, how their foot placement is, how their balance is, how they carry their shoulders, their posture. All those things play a part, you know, pay a part in them being that you know, successful functioning unit as an athlete. And then from there, we start breaking down their specific movement patterns. You know, where are their weaknesses? Where are their strengths? Is it a right side, left side? So if I have a tennis player that's predominantly right-handed, um, years ago I had one kid, he looked like he had a lobster claw on one side and looked like a completely undeveloped little twig mm. because he was so unilateral, one-sided on that arm. So I want to bring symmetry back into the equation so that he's not so uh, over-challenged in one particular area. And that, that leads to overuse and repetitive type things that can lead themselves to injury as well. So. There are a lot of moving parts when it comes to helping the athlete continue to develop to reduce and minimize their risk of injury. And you know, at TOA, we wanna make sure that we're, we're uncovering all the opportunities for the athlete to not only be successful, but to, to enjoy and participate with you know, having fun. All right, Les, let's give some, you know, the listeners and, and, and the fans that's uh, watching some tools to take home. If you are just starting out, whether you're older, adult, young, you know, kid, what are some of the exercises just for athleticism for any sport? Would you say you need to, you know, start doing these just to see where you're at, yeah. just to, you know, monitor your body and see how athletic you are and where, what you need to work on? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so if we want to go high level dynamic, very simple. Um, can the person jump and land in the same spot five times in a row? have elite level athletes that you know at their respective sports have a difficult time jumping and landing in the same spot mm -hmm. successfully five times in a row because they get so used to moving forward or laterally or they have some weakness or strengths from one side to the other mm. and it changes the dynamic of their body's ability to control. Oh. So they'll either jump forward repetitively or they'll jump to one side more than the other. So for me then I'm looking into our, well, what's the layer behind that? All right, so jumping. Uh, then standing on one foot. Can you stand on one foot and balance for 30 seconds. Do both sides. Then can you jump and land on one foot five times in a row? Then do the other foot. And you'll notice really quickly if you feel like I'm stable and good control or I'm not. Then we can go into basic body weight movements, a push up. Can you lower yourself to the ground and push yourself away with good control instead of your body flailing all over, you know, joints aching and groaning and moaning? Um, a body weight squat. Can you squat down to a decent depth of good control without your hips, your knees, your back, your ankles hurting? And if not, 
pay attention to those details. Your body's sending you signals that something's not quite how it needs to be. You know, like the lion in the savanna, right? You know, it's sleeping all day, but when it's time to go, it gives a little stretch, a little move, assesses where it is, and then it takes off and goes. So we need to be ready all the time. That's uh, easier to stay ready than it is to get ready, right? Uh, so yeah. when we stay in that ready state, we're more likely to overcome the things we're going to experience in our daily lives. Well, I'm going to stay ready, and I'm about to get ready with Les Whitley, TOA, Director of Sports Performance.